Millions of people suffer from food-related illnesses each year. The CDC estimates that out of 48 million cases, 38 million people didn't know what they ate that made them sick. USA Today food and travel columnist Larry Olmsted is out with a book called Real Food, Fake Food. It exposes the ways Americans are scammed into buying and eating fraudulent food. And Larry joins us now here at the desk. Good Thanks for being you. here. Thanks for having me. Let's start off with what exactly are you talking about when it comes to fake food? What is that? Uh, it's generally I say it's when you don't get what you think you're buying. But uh, an example would be if you order, say, lobster ravioli and it doesn't contain any lobster, which has been widely documented. So in your book, uh, you say you're talking about lobster ravioli. You specifically cite the seafood industry. You say it's rampant with fraud. Um, you use the analogy that if every time you pulled into a gas station and you filled your, you thought you were filling your tank with gasoline, you were actually filling your tank with dirty water, which is pretty disgusting. That's exactly what the seafood industry is like. Yes, it's it's uh, very common in the seafood industry what they call species substitution, where you buy one fish and you get a less expensive species. At least if you buy a T-bone steak, it might not be grass-fed or the you know, steak you thought you were buying, but you can tell it's a T-bone steak. Uh, when you buy seafood, often you really don't know what fish it is at all, and the substitutes are very undesirable. But they call it red snapper. It says red snapper. Is it not red snapper? Is that, is that not a species of fish? Red snapper is a very desirable species of fish. It's delicious. Um, that's why it's popular. It's also commercially fairly uncommon. So in studies where they buy samples at retail and at restaurants all over the country, test it, red snapper failed to be red snapper 94% wow. of the time. Wow. And the substitute, which is uh, called t the most common substitute, uh -huh. tilefish, is so high in mercury it's the FDA's do not eat list for pregnant women. Wow. You know, I thought it was fascinating. In your investigation, you discover that consumers have a better chance of finding safer seafood at the bigger box stores, which I would have thought would have been just the opposite. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have been surprised by that, but I recommend looking. There's a few third party uh, organizations that certify the validity of seafood the Marine Stewardship Council, the Global Aquaculture Alliance. And the big box stores are in a position to tell their distributors, as Walmart did, you have five years to get this certification or we're not going to buy from you anymore. And if you supply them, you're going to go get that certification. So you also say that olive oil and honey, which are hugely popular food items, um, you say that they're commonly fake. Now, I've always been, people accuse me of being a food snob because <laughs> I will always say, well, I, I spent most of my life in France. I tend to buy, for example, in, in the case of olive oil, I buy olive oil that is imported from France because I know that in Europe, the regulations are stricter as to what you can call a food, a certain food versus here in the U.S. You say that olive oil and honey are also uh, foods that are typically fake. Uh, they absolutely are. I mean, 60 Minutes just earlier this year did a study of olive oil, and they estimated 80 to 85 percent of what's labeled extra virgin in this country is not. Uh, experts vary. One German study put it at 97 wow. percent. Um, but I do re one of the places I recommend buying from in my book is Olivier and Company, which has a store here in Grand Central Station, and it's all from France. Yeah, so you're, yeah. you'll be right at yeah, home. Yeah, I buy. Like, like <laughs> well, what else? France. What else are we looking for on that bottle from France or Italy? You know, what do we want to look for? What do, should it say? Yeah, well, what you really want to look for is a pressed on date because the most important thing with olive oil, it's, it's always crushed immediately after picking, but a lot of them have a, what they say is a bottled on date, which doesn't mean anything because they could store it in a tank for a year and then put it in a <laughs> bottle, or a sell by date, which is also useless because that's up to the manufacturer. I looked in a gourmet store here in New York just yesterday and there were bottles on the shelf with a sell by date of December 2017 and no olive oil of any quality is good for more than a year. Okay. Yeah, good. it starts to get sort of rancid, right? Yep. It's uh, fresh juice. Right, exactly. Uh, all right. So so help us put together a shopping list. We're going to the supermarket. We want to buy the things that we like to eat, you know, meats and fish. Um, what should we be looking for? Well, it's a little different for each category, but one, uh, I, I bash a lot of the government labeling, but one thing that the USDA has done a pretty good job on is organic as it applies to produce and meats. Um, it, it does have a meaning, it's fairly regulated, not for seafood. So you'll see organic on seafood, but it's, it's meaningless because it's not regulated. So it depends what product you're buying. I'm gonna give spe specific tips for olive oil, um, for cheese, for different things. But in general, I say buy the food as close as you can to the whole form. If you buy coffee beans and grind them, you know it's coffee beans. You buy ground coffee, it's been yeah. found to have some unsavory substances in it. Wow. What have you found? 
Well, not what I found, oh. but what researchers <laughs> yeah. have found. Um, good adulterants to coffee would be ground acorns or roasted corn. Bad would be sawdust. Wow. And so, and you've, you've also said ground anything is suspicious. Right, the closer, we talked about the lobster ravioli. You buy a lobster, you know what it looks sure. like. You buy a whole fish, you can go buy a red snapper to market and if you know what red snapper looks like, you can't be fooled. But once you buy something that's filleted, cut up, chopped up, processed, becomes very hard. You make your own chili at home, you can go buy grass-fed, drug-free beef, but you buy a can of chili, you can't tell what it is. You know, it feels like uh, back when you were in like middle school, whenever you get to the lunchroom, <laughs> it's like, we don't know what this is. It's uh, some, kind a of a, some kind of a meat. <laughs> Exactly. It's a meat me. sandwich. <laughs> the book is Real Food, Fake Food. Larry Olmsted, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you.